Congratulations, Yao, and thank you so much to Steve Nash. So Yao, if you would now join me at one of these chairs, I have a few questions that I would like to ask of our honored guest tonight. You can have a seat. Do we have podium mics or uh, love mics? I see one here. Hi. Is this on? Okay. Hi, Yao. Hi, Lisa. How Congratulations on the award. Congratulations on your marriage and baby. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I want to take you back to 2002. You're 21 years old, you're the number one draft pick in the NBA. You have the hopes and dreams of over a billion people in China, Asians around the world, people scrutinizing your every move. How much pressure was that on you when you think back? Um, it's uh, think back, ten, uh, think about, uh, think back to uh, that time, it is uh, quite a bit pressure. I would say, um, I remember there's a moment when I'm about to step onto a plane, fly to Houston uh, from Shanghai. Uh, you know, there's about a dozen uh, media uh, reporters sworn to the airport to give uh, me a last shot before I leave. Um, I have that kind of a willing that turning back to my bedroom right away instead of going to step onto a plane, fly to Houston. Now I do feel a little bit scary uh, during that time. I honestly to say that, um, but um, you know, I just feel my parents is with me and they are always supporting me. They are very strong foundation. They always set a very strong foundation for me. I can't let them down. I mean, that, to, to shoulder that kind of pressure is tremendous for a 21-year-old kid. Did you feel that pressure? I do feel the pressure. I feel, I feel the pressure from the very first day after draft. Um, from the public opinion, uh, from the team, um, either Rockets or the team I play, used to be played in China. Um, I do feel the pressure, but uh, that's one of our one of our job to take care, take care of the, the pressure uh, on the court and uh, to return uh, whoever uh, select on me. Not to mention the pressure that you probably felt from, from the government as well. Um, actually, you can go out to them. They probably have more pressure than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so at what point, Yao, did you start to feel comfortable here in the United States, in the NBA. Was there a certain point that you felt, okay, I can do this? That, not until my third season, which is 2004, 2005 season, um, because I, um, I have two, two years experience in, uh, in um, sorry, in NBA already, and uh, you know, I have a lot of teammates who already play around a certain time, um, and also, um, I feel that my language wasn't that a uh, bother me anymore. Even I still have my uh, turbo with me, Colin Han, uh, with me. I just kind of like a shell for me. But um, when you can speak freely by yourself, then you feel much more comfortable. How is living in Houston? How is living in Houston? Well. Um, <clears throat> Hey John, I can tell you this. If you're living, t one of the good thing of living in Houston is we don't have a, a, a income that the state taxes. Oh. <laughs> He's been indoctrinated, John. You need to keep walking on that. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, Yao, you in China, you pretty much, at your height, had to play basketball. If you weren't seven foot six, 
would you have chosen to play basketball? Well, I, I play water polo before I play basketball. Because they think I'm not good enough, they'll kick me out, that's why I switched to basketball. <laughs> so, that's the story. So if I'm the word, if I wasn't seven foot something, um, I probably were going to choose be a, that's interesting, I just have a conversation with Bill Sanders. <laughs> Bill, I, I think I will be a, just a, a graduate from college and, uh, and do something relate to his uh, history or culture. That's what I interesting about it. Um, but I think in the school time, I will play some sports. I just feel that sports is some such a, a great strategy for educate people. Um, you know, for stu particularly the team sports like uh, football, basketball, that kind of stuff is uh, teach us a lot of uh, uh, leadership, uh, communicate, uh, teamwork, that kind of a, you cannot directly learn from the book. You only can experience it. How was it being back at the All-Star game this weekend? How was it back at being at the All-Star game this weekend? Um, it's like a zoo there. <laughs> well, it's quite interesting. Um, All-Star, you, know, you can ask Steve there. You've been, you've been through how many, 10, 20? <laughs> You know, we we uh, we always enjoy there. I meet a lot of friends and uh, a teammate or other a player from other team. You know, we don't get we don't get much chance to talk a lot during the season because we're playing one day uh, one city and fly to another. Uh, it's it's a good time for we can sit down a little bit at a lunch at a dinner or some meetings. We can talk a little bit. You know, share experience uh, a game friend from there. And obviously, you know, fans, it's a great holiday for the fans. Um, you know, fans can see so many of a basketball star and also other celebrities, such as Jay-Z and Beyonce, uh, doing last weekend in Houston. That's very, you know, very popular. I, I understand that you are in business school now in China and, and, and wanting to pr pursue your entrepreneurial um, aspirations. So what do you want to be when you grow up, Yao? <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm growing up. I'm grown, not up yet. <laughs> um, you mean after my school? Yeah, I mean, what, what would you like to do with this business degree? Um, I want to continue to learn to get my, maybe my master's degrees. Uh, this is just my four years college right now. I just feel that uh, through the school, I have to, uh, I want to, uh, you know, get my patient better. You know, as a as a player, it's and particularly at a young age, you you know, the, we are very short of our patient. Uh, we want to do the thing right and get that done today. We say today, that means today. And I realized that, uh, real realized that a lot of the thing in this world, you have to be patient on that. You have to rely on that maybe uh, weeks months, maybe years, such as, I don't know, decrease the income tax. No, it's not, definitely not done by one day. This is an indoctrinated Texan I have sitting next to me, John. Yeah, you've also become an incredible advocate for so many different causes. Um, you, you've been an advocate for, for banning shark fin soup and shark finning around the world. And what's so impressive is that you pretty much single-handedly have reduced the consumption of shark fin soup by 50% in China, which is extraordinary. Why, why did this issue become so important to you? Um, first of all, uh, I think um, people are very familiar with uh, shark fin soup now, um, but it wasn't that familiar before. Um, if you can... Uh, if you know a couple, a couple numbers, you will know how serious this problem is. Before that campaign launched, there is about a 70, 73 million shark get killed every year just because they're shark, uh, because they're fans. Um, and um, that is not just to try to protect a BC from the ocean. This is about to protect ourselves because, you know, that's a, a, a how to say that, the chain, uh, living chain, whatever. The top predator. Yes. In, in the uh, sorry. Um, 
Um, if a shark is gone, uh, gone, there's one after another and another and another until, until our human ourself were disappeared one by after another. Uh, it really is not just only because try to protect that, it's protect the future about ourself. Oh, as I, I can tell everybody a good news with uh, Jeremy Ling just joining us. Uh, to wish, uh, we shoot a very short PSA. Uh, Peter, are you here? Um, I don't know, Peter Knight, who is the founder of the Wild 8. I, I know he's Peter here. Knight, I, the founder of Wild 8, is here. Yeah. yeah I, can you stand, stand up, please? Okay. All right, there we go. Thank you. So, um, we have Jeremy Ling joining us, I think because he's from the Bay Area, also including the, the California. Um, that's an, uh, California is another big marketing of the shark fin soup. To have him joining us is, uh, is a very big success of us to influence more people to cut down those, uh, those marketing. And I appreciate his, uh, his, his uh, effort to join, uh, um, to persist, sorry, <laughs> so to join us and helping us. And also, don't forget those, uh, those staff, uh, including uh, Peter, uh, is, is put uh, their time and their career into this and, uh, and, and make this happen. Um, I want to ask you something personal. You are a daddy. Um, in China, over the last couple of decades, the, the country has had this one-child policy. And over the past few decades, there has been a, a preference for boys. So when you found out that you were having a baby girl, how did you feel? Um, that's to honesty, I was slightly disappointed. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> well, I saved a, 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 a video, I mean, not video, uh, the audio in my cell phone, which is my daughter called me, uh, uh, left, uh, uh, left, left a voice message on my phone, which is, good morning, daddy. That really melt your heart right there. Um, I would say that I would say that, that um, the really the, the boy or girl does not really bother us anymore. Uh, the one child policy that's we had to face to it because the population in China we have to do something to control it. And right now is that the one child policy is a little bit different than before because because uh, the new policy is if you are the if if, if I was, and I was, I, I am uh, a, the single child from my family and my wife and also that we ha can have two. So, uh, no, we may get to have two. How, how has your baby girl changed you? Um, when, a, when a baby born, I start taking a back seat. That's the first ball. <laughs> But before that, you know, before that, because I play season, I, you know, I play a lot of games, so I'm always like a first being taken care of in the house by my mom, by my wife. And now it's, you know, what happened? You, 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 you were the biggest kid <laughs> <laughs> until now. On that part, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> but I, I haven't still his bottle yet. Um, well, when baby born, you, you, you feel that uh, at the beginning you are nervous, you are scaring. Are you asking experience for me? <laughs> uh, yeah, we are a little bit scared. Uh, we are a little bit uh, um, uh, uh, nervous about everything. You know, I remember the first couple of days when she had feels a little bit creepy, a little bit uh, crying, and we, we pick up a phone call our, our doctor right away until he tells us, it's okay, it's okay. You don't need to come. You don't need, you sure? <laughs> um, but uh, with the parents, with our parents' help, uh, this get pretty get through pretty pretty uh, quick, and we get a handle, We can handle that. Um, until today, that um, she started running around in the house, um, and uh, she gonna play basketball. Well, um, if she want to, I would love to uh, have her play some basketball. Like I said, uh, sports is such a a great game to develop their. Uh, Develop the children's character. I think I would encourage her to play, not not necessarily basketball, but other team sports. You know, one of the things yeah, that I've always wondered. You know, President Obama can put a hat on and glasses and avoid 
the masses uh, in, in many ways, or evade the masses. You really can't do that. You really can't escape. Um, where do you find peace? Where do you find privacy? The answer will be always home. The home is the safe place. That, that, that explains the safe, warm, um, peaceful, and uh, a sweet sleep over there. You know, that's all behind that word home. Um, just like you said, I can't hide out there. You know, I can't pretend like I put a head on, sunglasses, and walk there, <laughs> walk through a shopping mall. Yeah, I can. Um, I even walk, cannot walk through there, walk through a table today. But um, no, I have to accept it. That will not be changed until my, my next life, life, hopefully. But um, I have to accept it and, um, you know, and, and take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Um, if you always just going to argue that what kind of a disadvantage you had, you miss a lot of a thing in your life. Well, you really have become this incredible global ambassador. And you know, our two countries, the US and China, have had this unpredictable relationship. And, and I think that there are a lot of questions about this, this relationship in the future. Where do you see your role in this US-China relationship? I think both US and China all understand that both countries are too powerful. Uh, powerful in two that I cannot make an even and just a slightly mistake. That would be uh, damaging entire world. So I think both countries uh, will be very carefully to execute every uh, dis uh, decision we're going to make. Uh, so under that situation, I think we will find out. I just need to take time and patience and to, uh, uh, to you know, establish this relationship in the future. And the last thing I want to ask you, a lot of people may not know this, but, but I did the first interview you, with you in English, lengthy interview in 2002, and I also went with you to take your driving test. <laughs> and you weren't the best driver, Yao. <laughs> Has your driving improved, and are you driving in China? I'm driving in China right now. <laughs> but I have to, man I have to uh, uh, remind you that uh, California is driving crazy <laughs> than Texas. This is true. Listen, yeah, we are all, on behalf of everyone here, we, we're just so proud of you, and we're so proud to have you as, as this global ambassador between the US and China. And, and I applaud you. I congratulate. I wish you much success in, in all of your future endeavors. Thank you. Oh, thank you.